Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jago Bind and this is your channel for Grace. Thank you so much for being here, for watching. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notified of when I go live and when I upload videos. And please give this video a thumbs up to keep it circulating. And thank you so much for your presence here and your support for this channel. This video is all about the powerful transit of Venus moving into its ruling sign of Taurus. But before we get into that message, I want to let you know some really awesome things that are happening this week. The first one is I'm going to go live on Friday with mini readings. And these mini readings will include three options. You can choose from a natal reading where I look at your chart and give you some insight on what I see on your chart. A um, transit reading where I look at how the transits that are going on right now are affecting you. And the third option is tarot slash oracle. So you get to choose one of those options when you sign up for a mini reading this Friday. Also, um, the way to sign up is in the description of this video, but basically you send $25 to my PayPal link. Get on the list um, and don't wait because it will get filled or full. <laughs> so the other thing is if you have not yet gotten um, subscribed to my newsletter, please do because every week on Wednesdays, I send out a moon magic report giving you insight about the moon the phase that the moon is in, the uh, sign that the moon is in, and how all of that is affecting us emotionally, as well as what aspects the moon is making to other planets and how that is affecting us for the week. And also tomorrow, I will be releasing a Venus in Taurus special transit email to the newsletter group, which I will go over the transit in detail and also the how it's going to be affecting you specifically based on your sun sign and rising sign. So if you sign up today for the newsletter, you'll be able to receive that email tomorrow when it goes out. The third is, speaking of Venus, who is the goddess of love, I have my Woman and the Moon course, online course, self-study course available on my website, channelforgrace.guru. This is a class to help you understand the phases of the moon, the what happens when the moon switches signs and phases, and how you can learn to actually manifest with the cycle of the moon, which is um, pretty much pointed importantly by the new moon and the full moon cycle and the moon goes through all of the signs every month at, at about a 28 and a half day cycle we learn about all that in the class we also learn about the moon centers which are um, two and a half day cycles that every woman goes through uh, that shifts her emotional um, affection perspective and way of uh, feeling and communicating in relationships in her world and we go through these cycles once um, every month as well. And so you learn about those cycles and you learn how to manage and also balance your emotions. It is uh, full of information. And if you sign up for that, I actually send you a copy of your natal chart um, image in a PDF file. So go check that out on my website. Really excited. And if you would like to sign up for a uh, tarot reading or astrology reading from me, you can also do that on my website at channelforgrace.guru and I am going to be providing a new type of reading which will be a transit reading plus tarot and that will be available by the end of the week to look out for that if you're curious that will help you in times of need when you need some guidance when you need um, a reading where and a little more accurate uh, then I guess you could say tarot or a little bit more um, specific in terms of what's actually affecting you and, and in what area of your life. And then the tarot adds a flavor of more intuition, more confirmation, um, more divine knowledge and more wisdom. And that reading will be available again by the end of the week. So make sure that you guys check that out. So let's talk about this Venus and Taurus. Venus rules the sign of Taurus. So when it comes into the sign, it is like the Empress blessing us with her presence. She is the goddess of earth. She is mother earth. She is Pachamama. She wants us to ground. She wants us to be connected to our roots. She wants us to see the beauty in the world. And during, you know, these chaotic times that we're living in, especially this, there's a lot of Neptune energy in the sky, especially there's going to be the sun conjunct Neptune and the full moon in Virgo on Monday, the 9th is actually going to be opposing that sun and Neptune 
conjunction. And there's a lot of kind of deception in, in our world and the world at large. But a lot of this is also kind of taking us away from our true um, purpose and our true connection with Mother Earth and nature and our soul. And so that is what we're going to be um, focusing on for this reading. We will allow um, this Venus and Taurus to bring us a very much needed message during these chaotic times. So without further ado, um, make sure you uh, pick uh, one of these piles. It, it goes one, two, three, four, and then jump ahead to the timestamp belonging to your specific pile, which is in the comments of this video. So again, thank you so much, and I will see you um, very soon. All right, pile, num pile number one, your theme for this Venus and Taurus transit is the Orbs of Light card from the Lightworker Oracle cards. And then you've we've got these um, five tarot cards that have come out. Very interesting. Three of Swords, Eight of Wands, Eight of Swords, Ten of Swords, and Three three of wands I, I, if you guys know tarot you can you know that three of swords the eight of swords and the ten of swords can be kind of gnarly cards but i'll i'll read you the story that this message gives you especially because of this card the orbs of light um the meaning of this card i'm actually going to read from the the oracle book but it is actually literally a message coming to you and this is what it says the spiritual worlds are delivering a message to you you may have already heard it through telepathic reception and mistaken it for your own thought, yet it is inspired by your higher guidance, those spiritual beings that love you without condition. It is an answer to a question and guidance to increase your happiness. And I think that's so beautiful. So those of you that have asked a question, here's the answer and it has to do with relationships because we start with the three of swords. The Three of Swords in the regular tarot is the card that has the heart on it. And then the swords are like going through the heart. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is a card about heartbreak. This is a card about feeling like, you know, you have been either, you know, your heart's been broken. Something has, you know, failed. It is not a happy feeling. However, this card represents where you're coming from. It's not necessarily where you're going, but it is where you're coming from. And I feel like you're coming from a place of being heartbroken. Maybe there's been a relationship, you know, in your recent past that has not worked out that has really left you heartbroken for whatever reason. Like maybe it just wasn't a good match. Maybe um, someone else was involved. Maybe there was a third party involved because we've got the three swords. Maybe it was because it just kind of fell away and it wasn't the best, you know, situation. But either way, you're coming from a place of a broken heart and you're mending your broken heart. And you have to remember, like you have to have faith and hope for the future, which is exactly what the Eight of Wands is bringing. The Eight of Wands is telling you, you are almost at your goal. And this is leading you somewhere really beautiful and powerful. And it has to do with love. This is finding new love. Now, right now, you might feel this Eight of Swords energy, which is kind of like having a blindfold, feeling trapped. You're not really sure. You, It's like you don't really trust. You feel really vulnerable, like you're in a really vulnerable space and you're having a hard time trusting that, that it's okay to move forward. But you need to trust because you'll see at the end of this reading with the Three of Wands how we it ends up feeling like really beautiful and it kind of brings it full circle. Now the Ten of Swords is the card that tells you, look, whatever whatever has it, it transpired in your life, it's over. The Ten of Swords is about something being dead. You can't keep beating the dead horse because it's already dead. And so you have to trust that there's only moving up from here. That phase of your life is over and the suffering and the pain that you have felt and the vulnerability and the, you know, I feel like heartbreak can lead, especially like Three of Swords energy can be about, you know, losing faith or losing hope or losing trust, being not being able to trust other people. And that's why you feel like super vulnerable with the Eight of Swords. But that phase is over and there's a new phase coming. And the new phase is all about the Three of Wands, which is literally... Like you're looking out into the horizon at the new possibilities. And this could literally mean a new relationship. 
It can be a new relationship when it comes to business or it can be a new relationship when it comes to love. So you have to, you know, look at your own life and see how this is playing out for you. But Venus and Taurus is saying there's a beautiful thing coming. This um, person in this card is actually really looking out towards the horizon. Sorry, that's my dog scratching herself. <laughs> and she is actually seeing the beauty of the bigger picture, the beauty of the perspective, because it looks like she's up on a mountain of all, and, and also she's naked, which is that vulnerability, which is that sensual, which is the goddess. Like, that's why we have goddess Isis here. But, you know, like the goddess is the goddess in her natural form. She doesn't need any clothing. She doesn't need any like extra layers to cover up that like the beauty, that sensual beauty. So you are in, in a very vulnerable space. We can interpret it this way. You are in a very vulnerable space, but you are looking out at the horizon and you are seeing that there are infinite possibilities out there and that you and you will find what you're looking for if you focus on the beauty. So here we go. Here are your oracle cards. You've got no place like home. You've got potential and you've got emotions are running high. Oh yes, they are. No Place Like Home is a beautiful message of remembering that Venus in Taurus really does want you to come home. She wants you to come home to your heart space. She wants you to come home to you. She wants you to remember how powerful you are and that you've actually got what it takes to let go of the past and move into the future. In your hands, you hold the answer. You hold the key. You hold the light. This is the message. And the potential card is really connected to that three of wands. She's looking out and seeing the potential of the world. And there are definitely emotions running high because you're trying to figure out which way to go. You're trying to be vulnerable but at the same time also protect yourself. So you're gonna feel a lot. This Venus in Taurus is gonna bring up a lot of emotions for you. You gotta trust. That's, that's the best thing I can tell you. The best advice I can give you is to trust that it's all moving in a, in a better direction. You have from the goddess cards, which are basically the major arcana, you've got the death card and I got, I, I pulled one of these cards out because of the affirmation here. It says, I surrender my ego and no longer let fear rule my life. I have love, faith, and hope. That's your affirmation. The death card is about letting go and being okay with transformation and release and death, <laughs> literal death, which is the 10 of swords. So in through that death, through that transformation, you will uncover your truth and here we are again we see the goddess again she's naked in this picture too so there's that aspect of vulnerability that you are dealing with that is you know venus and taurus is really testing your your ability to stay open during this time of change and shift i'm going to roll the astro dice for you to see what astrological influences or what the planets the signs and um the houses can tell us uh can give us tell us about you and your journey through venus in taurus so we've got the 11th house we've got cancer and we've got i believe yep that's uranus so Uranus actually uh, rules the sign of Aquarius, which also rules the 11th house. Cancer is, as we know, the sign of love and intuition ruled by the moon. So we've got the moon. The moon is bringing a message here. The 11th house is the house of friendship. So what this is, and, and Uranus brings a newness, an innovation, a di like a, a different perspective, uh, a very powerful shift. Now, Venus is going to conjunct Uranus in the beginning stage the first few days of its transit in Taurus and this is transforming our relationships. It, Uranus is asking you to transform the, the way you see relationships when it comes to friendships too. So maybe this old story can be transformed into a different relationship. Maybe that story can be like revived but in a completely different way. And it's going to have to do with love. Now, we also have the North Node in Cancer, which is like connecting to your heart center and connecting to your truth. 
So Uranus is shifting, transforming, changing. This really matches the energy of your reading. There's death, there's defining relationships in a completely new way, and then there's trusting your heart, trusting your emotions, trusting that your intuition will guide you through these next, um, this next month. So thank you, uh, and I hope this reading resonated with you. Let me know in the comments, and I will see you again next time. Satnam. All right, pile number two. The theme for you for this Venus in Taurus transit is the Eternal Now, which is a card from the Lightworker Oracle deck. And you have these five tarot cards that follow it, giving you a, um, a message. You've got the Ace of Wands, the Lovers, the Four of Swords, the Strength card, and the Chariot, the Chariot card. So we're going to start with the Eternal Now, and I'm going to read to you from the book what this card actually means. Well, you can see already that it's like being in the moment is a message that Venus in Taurus is asking of you. It actually fits very well this transit because Taurus is that grounding earth energy. You have to be here right now to feel what's around you. You have to use your senses, which means you have to be in the present moment. So that's part of the message here for you. Within you is great strength and courage. However, just because you can manage to keep going when you are drained or stressed, it doesn't mean that you have to do so. You are encouraged by your higher guidance to request assistance in letting go of tension within your mind and body. You will gain energy through this release and perhaps even see things in a new and more optimistic light. Shifting into a more present, relaxed and enjoyable state of being will help you overcome the past and successfully create your future. Let's go into the tarot cards. So beginning with the Ace of Wands. Now that's actually really powerful. The Lovers card is intense. The Lovers, the Strength and the Chariot are three major arcanas. You literally pulled three major arcana cards, which means that this is major transit for you. It's going to be affecting you in a very powerful way in your own personal life. The Ace of Wands is a new beginning of passion, but you know what else it can represent? It can literally represent um, pregnancy or being pregnant with a new project or being pregnant with a new idea, something that you want to create. That is what the Ace of Wands can represent, but the Wands is the element of fire and that's desire and passion and you know the, the desire to, to create something, to, to manifest something into reality. The next card here is the Lover's card. So I feel like you're pregnant with the potential to have a very beautiful relationship and the relationship that you're, it could be that the relationship that you're in right now is really supporting you. And the lovers is also Gemini. So it's like that kind of double, that twin energy, twin flames or soulmates, but that's the lovers. The lovers um, brings in that aspect of connection, um, deep soulful connection um, with the heart center and understanding between two people. And I feel like you are moving in that direction. There is a seed that you are planting right now, a desire, maybe a desire for a beautiful relationship. And if you keep your focus on that, and if you kind of keep it, keep that fire burning, it will manifest, but you've got to put in the work, remember? And you got to release the pressure. So this isn't like you have to make it happen right now. Maybe you've already found that, relationship and you are in a place of now the seed has been planted and this relationship is going to grow but that's another message that could that for some of you this could be that message your you know your other your other half your your the person that you're supposed to be with your soulmate is is could be right here with you right now um in, in present in your life or it could be just just right within reach and you need to focus on self-care. That is a major thing right now because in order to grow, you know, when you when you think about pregnancy, like when women get pregnant, they need to like self-care becomes number one. Like they have to take time off. They have, you can't be stressed out and pregnant because it'll affect what you're birthing, what you're growing within you, what you're creating. And something beautiful has is starting to grow. So you have to take care of yourself. The Four of Swords is just about that. The Four of, Four of Swords is about resting and not pushing. So don't push this. 
don't ruin this opportunity by pushing it and wanting it to happen faster than you want it to or forcing it to happen a certain way. You have to do the opposite. You have to relax your energy and let it come into full fruition because you've already put the energy in and the desire in to make it happen. It'll, it's, it's something, it's like you, now you just have to water it. And the way that you water it is by like relaxing, taking a break, and then letting yourself come back refreshed. Because when you come back refreshed from taking a break from this Four of Swords energy, you take the time out literally to sleep. <laughs> um, you come back a lot stronger than before. And, and you will be in your full strength if you take care of yourself. And the chariot, which is you know your, your, the, your ride that comes to take you away, will arrive and you will go in the direction to where you want to go. And, and the chariot is what makes things move along quicker but you can't get to that point you you're not ready for that yet because right now you need to really take care of yourself and like relax the push don't try to force it it needs to happen on its own the seed has been planted and it this this relationship will grow will become something beautiful but it but if you if you try to push it it's not going to work here are your um, oracle card. So you got to the sea. You also have gateway. You also have pleasure and a new romantic cycle begins. This is a really um, very much uh, Venus and Taurus, the goddess of love reading to the sea. So Venus was actually born of the sea. And the significance of this is she was born of the water element. And the water represents our emotions. The water is our connection to the moon. The moon um, rules the tides or controls the tides of the earth. Basically all of the cycles, all of the seasons, without the moon, without the emotions, we could not survive. Our emotions are a guiding system. So you need to take this to the sea, meaning you need to understand what's going on emotionally for you. This is a gateway. This Ace of uh, Wands energy is a gateway to a whole new world. You can see it in this card and then you can see it here. There is a portal, little stairs moving up towards a portal and also a deer, which represents um, serenity. It represents uh, grace. It represents this like soft energy um, that is very innocent and loving and, and very natural. Think of Bambi, right? It's like so cute and like, Think of deer in general. They're so graceful. They're so light. Like you can barely hear them and they can jump and bounce like and just like leave really fast. So they're very light energies and um, they are also very sweet. So that's what you need to. And of course, the card is about pleasure. Pleasure will will arrive when you take care of yourself and again, I need to say this again because it keeps coming up and you try not to force whatever it is you want to happen to happen. You need to let it happen on its own. Now you got the new moon in Libra. New moons are about setting intentions and this is about a new romantic cycle beginning. So there's balance happening in your life. There's um, connection there. You know, the universe is wanting to show you that you can achieve what you want, you know, in the realm of relationships, you can have like that, that relationship that you've always wanted, but you need to be okay with, um, letting it happen on its own time. Now, here is the last card that you get. And, um, this is from the goddess cards. It's actually, they're just basically the major arcana and you got the tower and that's very interesting. Um, but I got these, I pulled the card because I want you to have a mantra and your mantra is, I have faith, all is not lost if I am committed to my spiritual beliefs, even in times of great pain, ignorance, and suffering. So this is a card reminding you to have faith, that all is not lost, and if you stay committed, that it will literally <laughs> come to fruition. It will eventually birth. Uh, let's pull some astro dice for you. We have fourth house, Mercury, and Gemini. Well, that's interesting. So... Mercury rules the sign of Gemini and the fourth house is the house of the home, also ruled by Cancer and the emotions and the moon. Again, wow, this, the last reading had Cancer in it as well. But Mercury is about the mind. The, Gemini is about communication. 
you need to be clear in your communication, especially in the realm of home for you. Now, if this, you know, this relationship is happening in within your home space, then it's very important for you to find that communication. We can't communicate when we're out of sorts. We can communicate clearly when we're stressed out, when we're emotionally up and down and we have no control. We have to be in a good space to be able to communicate. And so right here, this is saying, you know, Mercury wants you to think about and um, focus on uh, communicating your desires and the things that you love and intellectually in a, in, a, in a high intellectual way when it comes to the realm of home so what's going on at home how can you be how can you communicate better at home and that is the message that has been added to your reading so thank you so much I hope this resonated with you let me know in the comments and I will see you again next time Satnam all right, pile number three, the theme for you is the pink rose of Lady Nada. You've got the king of, king of crystals, the emperor, the star seed, the six of wands, and the temperance card as the tarot message. So we're going to start with the pink rose of Lady Nada and tell you what this means. Now, first of all, just by looking at this card, what I see is like the rose represents the, the divine feminine and you are healing an aspect of yourself that is the divine feminine and when you connect to the rose um, you connect to your heart center which means you connect to your soul and you can see you are open it's like you are open to receiving that guidance and that sacred divine feminine um, sort of uh, ascension teachings that are coming to you just just by you know intuition and grace and this doesn't necessarily mean that this is a reading for a woman but it could be um, but it is about the sacred divine feminine and the rose is like the sisterhood of the rose as well so that's Mary Magdalene that's Anna grandmother of Jesus that's mother Mary that's um, Isis this is the lineage of the women and the sacred divine feminine and the high priestess and that is something that is being activated right now for you as Venus enters into Taurus now you are in the myths of a heart healing a healing of the fears and anxieties that have held you back from enjoying your full magnificence Lady Nada is here with all her gentle power washing you in soft pink light all anger Fear, sadness, bitterness, disappointment, and hurt are soothed and loved into peace. She brings you a sign of your future blossoming into deeper love. That's so beautiful. It's so. This is what you're going through. You're going through a very deep healing process right now. And Venus in Taurus is like Lady Nada coming to you with grace and like that soft pink light. I would recommend you surround yourself or either get rose quartz um, that will help you f connect to that frequency. Now, the King of Crystals is a card about stability and also experience. And I think that you're moving into a stable place because of the experiences that you've had. And that this healing that you've gone through has helped you step into your power as the emperor energy. Because the emperor rules, right, the kingdom. The emperor is very responsible. The emperor is also about structure and control. And the emperor like doesn't mess around like he has a lot of responsibility over a lot of things and he is in control and he is strong and he is confident and he's in his power so it's about you being in your power and connecting to also the masculine side of you because the masculine side of you holds space for the feminine to flow for that that beautiful divine um energy to heal you have to have some part of you has to hold space for that to happen and that's like the emperor energy. So you are finding stability now through this healing process and you're finally stepping into your confidence. And so you are a star seed. You are a light being. You have a message to bring to the world. And in order to do that, in order for that message to come through, I see a, a very deep connection between uh, these two cards here, the pink rose and the star seed. She's holding the light in your hands. You are holding the light in your hands. You're holding that message in your hands and you are you're ready to bring it to the world and you have to be in a place of confidence and stability to be able to do that that's a very important part of being a light worker and the six of wands is all about being a leader showing people guiding people 
you're you're moving into the future right you're finding your confidence you're stepping into your power and you're moving into the future and you're becoming an example for people who are healing but they're not at the phase that you're at but you are that example and so you have to take that responsibility you have to know what you're here for you have to know what it is and you have to understand it very clearly and the temperance card is here because she's all about balance and healing and finding you know the two cups it can also be a romantic connection but you know you have to you have these two energies the yin and the yang and they have to balance themselves out and you can only do that by really being aware of where you're at and what your powers are and allow but and also allowing yourself and having that experience of healing because we can only teach if we have the experience we can only speak to something if we've had the experience and you've had the experience and now it's time for you to step into your power and that's what venus and taurus is asking you to do you have um, a change in the wind a very fitting card yes there's definitely a change in the wind you're going to start going in a different direction we also got the openness card so and it looks like it's a full moon we are also moving into a full moon in virgo on monday march 9th and so that is an activation of the full moon in virgo is going to help us sort of clean up the mess um, but the winds are changing and so you have to you have to meditate and contemplate the new moon in Pisces you have to Pisces is the divine Pisces is the mystical you have to close your eyes and go within and focus and let those mystical messages come through and once they do that is how you step forward in your life now I pulled a goddess card for each of these readings which is a major arcana and you got the justice card and the focus is on the mantra the mantra is I am truthful with others and myself and I take full responsibility for my choices. That is definitely a powerful message. And it matches everything that we've just laid out, especially the King of Pentacles or the King of Crystals and um, the Emperor card, because those two take responsibility for their actions. And justice can really only, you know what I mean, be present if there is this energy of responsibility. I'm going to roll the Astro Dice. And uh, we'll see what the astrology message is for you. So we've got the ninth house of spiritual integration. We've got Uranus. And we've got Aries. So what does this mean? Aries is the action taker. He's the doer. He's the warrior. He's Mars energy. He is also the fool. But he takes action. Aries is the fire element ready to take action towards creating a new Uranus um, way of spiritually seeing the world. The ninth house is the house of spiritual integration. Uranus is the planet of innovation and Aries, Aries is the planet of action. So the universe is wanting you, it's, it's telling you it's time to take action towards creating a new way of spiritually seeing the world, a new spiritually, spirituality, a new path a new life path, a new purpose, and you connect it to destiny. And this is powerful. This this message is really powerful. I actually am excited for you guys, and I wish you good luck on your journey, and enjoy this Venus in Taurus transit. Thank you so much. Leave a comment below, and I will see you next time. Satnam. All right, pile number four. This is the message for you. We start your theme for Venus in Taurus transit with the heart transmission, and then these five tarot cards followed after the ten of crystals the transformation card nine of crystals the sun and the eight of cups now right away there's two major arcana cards here which means that this is a major theme um, for you and things to really focus on as you as venus moves through the sign of taurus but your main theme for the month is this work your light um this light worker oracle card which is called the heart transmission and what this card represents is this your heart <clears throat> is capable not only of giving and receiving love, but of connecting you to a great network of beings that resonate in the highest frequencies of divine love. Through your heart, you can receive information and guidance from networks of light that fill our universe. As you learn to open your heart to receiving these transmissions, your ability to work with group consciousness in a loving way increases. 
you shall affect humanity in a loving way, influencing the collective, rather than allowing the lower frequencies of the collective to overwhelm you. That's beautiful. I see you stepping into your power here with this card. And because it's followed by the Ten of Crystals, which is a card of abundance and security and, you know, like a family being taken care of. This is like financial stability, like structural stability. This is abundance in your life and it's going to feel really good. Now you have been going through a major transformation and you are also in the middle of seeing the beauty of something. So the beauty that you're seeing is the beauty in loving yourself and being with yourself and understanding yourself with the nine of crystals this is also a card of abundance but it's a card of really being okay with you know being in solitude and being connected to your essence and who you are and understanding who you are it doesn't surprise me that the sun is right next to this card when the sun is all about your identity it's also your ego but the sun shines bright it's about joy it's about happiness it's about you know living life in a beautiful way but it really is about who who are you how do you identify yourself what's what are the most important things for you these are some of the questions that you need to be asking yourself right now during this transit and you are walking away from something that was very painful from something that was that hurt you a lot you're walking away from that that's what the eight of cups is all about and that's okay it's completely okay because in that walking away that is you trusting your heart that is you being okay in the solitude because in the solitude in that stillness that's where you receive the answers and that's where you are able to truly transform these are your oracle cards that came out with the reading the first card is the community card next one is stillness new moon in sagittarius luck is on your side and the blue moon believe in the impossible now i feel like this transition that you're going through is is taking you to a place where you will actually find the people that will help you find more of that beautiful powerful healing energy and being in your heart space like a community of people who support each other who love each other this could be a friendship, this could be an organization, this could be just, you know, you're just meeting new people and somehow you're feeling a connection. I think all of this is guiding you in that direction. So you're walking away from the old so that you can step into a new way of being. And Uranus is actually conjuncting Venus uh, this week. And in their conjunction, they will they are revolutionizing and changing the way we see relationships and asking us to step up and and actually have better relationships futuristic relationships uranus is ruled by aquarius which is the future but right now it's in taurus teaching us to build that future right and when venus meets up with uranus it's a time to revolutionize the way we see relationships and the way we we are with other people in relationship the stillness card comes back to that nine of crystals energy and that the sun and this is about you this is about being in stillness because in that stillness in that meditative space you will receive the answers now jupiter the planet jupiter is on your side with this new moon in sagittarius which means luck abundance expansion of this manifesting energy and the blue moon asking you to believe in the impossible because the impossible is not really impossible unless you believe it's impossible uh, so you have to believe that it is possible and that is what the universe is asking you to do that's jupiter and sagittarius energy it's like you got to believe in something better you got to believe in something more beautiful and that is the, that faith is what's going to carry you forward your goddess card is the judgment card and the focus on this specific deck is to uh, look at the mantra and so the mantra is down here at the bottom of the card and yours is i awaken to the timelessness of body spirit and soul all illusions are shattered now the judgment card is really powerful it's funny because it, in the in the image we see like you know the angel coming and you know kind of like resurrecting everybody and your judgment day and all that stuff but the truth is that this is not like that the message in this card what it really is about is about us 
the, the, like the last judgment is not about someone else bringing judgment on us. It is about us ending the cycles of judgment and judging ourselves and judging others. That is how we build a better community. So you see the connection here? You have to stop judging yourself and you have to stop judging others. And you have to be in that higher state of mind and essence, which is all heart space, in order. And you have to walk away from that old stuff in order to step into a new way of being in relationship, which is the main message that Venus and Taurus and that conjunction with Uranus is bringing us. So for you, it's really affecting you in this realm. So I want to pull, um, or I want to roll the dice for you so that we can get a message from the astrology to add to this reading. And look at that, Sagittarius, ninth house, ruler of the ninth house, and the moon. So the moon is our emotions. The ninth house is the spiritual integration ruled by uh, Sagittarius and Jupiter, which I was just talking about. And that Sagittarius is freedom. It is being curious about the future. It is looking forward and going on that journey of discovering. Who are you discovering? Well, you're discovering who you are. You're trusting. You're walking away and going on a new journey. And what you're going to discover is a new way of seeing the world in a spiritual sense in a spiritual way and you're going to understand your emotions and how they relate to your spiritual life this is a, a journey of spiritual integration that venus and taurus is activating for you so i'm really excited for you and um can't wait to hear all about it so let me know in the comments below how this reading resonated with you and i will see you again next time satnam